Welcome to lesson three, measure skid and yaw marks to determine speed. Our objectives are to use formulas to determine minimum driving speed based on the skid and yaw marks. Typically, the person at fault is not always a certain thing. And when that happens, the reconstructionists who have knowledge of both crime scene investigations and mathematics that will help them to circumstances surrounding the accident, perhaps how fa fast you were going or who's at fault. Usually state patrol will stick around on the scene of an accident and take a lot of measurements, especially of the skid marks and the yaw marks in order to determine things like this. As you probably already know, when a driver hits the brakes really hard, it locks them up and a skid mark is made. When the driver first applies the brakes, the skid mark is, is light and it's a skid mark and then the mark darkens until the car comes to a stop on its own or in the case of a collision. If a car has anti-lock brakes, the are left usually will look like uniform dashed lines on the pavement. When a driver does start to skid, usually you don't have much control of the steering and so the vehicle will continue to move straight ahead while the wheels are locked. When the vehicle slips sideways while at the same time continuing in a forward motion, the tire marks will appear curved and these are called yaw marks. So taking skid and yaw marks, the measurements, into consideration as well as from the scene, reconstructionists can determine the speed of the car when entering the skid. These formulas are often presented in court and are recognized for their strength in modeling real-world automobile accidents. Let's start with the skid mark formula. Here it is, it's actually really quite simple. S represents the speed of the car. And we can determine the speed of the car when we take the square root of 30. And 30 is a constant value that has been determined um, through various tests. So we take 30 times D, which is our skid distance. So that's when we measure our speed. And then times the drag factor, which is F, you can think of that as, as friction and then times the braking efficiency. So we have to remember that everybody's brakes don't always operate at 100% efficiency. So we need to get an estimate of that. And this is our equation. So let's look at each of these individually. Braking efficiency is a number determined by an examination of the rear and front wheel brakes. It can run from zero, if we don't have any brakes, we lose our brakes, to 100%. Brakes are in excellent condition, we always want to express our braking efficiency as a decimal. So if it's at 30%, we want to express it as 0.3, not 30. Now let's look at drag factor. So these drag factor percentages or, or marks were compiled by doing tests with pieces of equipment known as drag sleds. So somebody went out and actually came up with the drag factors at a drag factor range. And this is a table of generally acceptable ranges on different types of road services. And you'll notice that as the road becomes more slick, the drag factor goes down. The road that has the highest drag factor would be cement, and that would slow you down the most. Finally, we have skid distance. And this is a function of the number and depth, or number and length, I should say, of the skid marks left on the scene. So if there are four marks all of equal length, then that's the length that is used. If the lengths are different, or there are fewer than four skid marks, then the average of the lengths is used. If there's only one skid mark, then they use that. So that's going to be important for your notes when you're, when you're doing your practice problems. So make sure that you write down that if we have different lengths, we take an average. If they're all the same, then we go ahead and use that. Okay, now let's look at yaw marks, the formula for that. So again, we have speed, and this one is even smaller. Speed is just the square root of 15, again a constant, times the friction or drag factor, times the radius. Okay, here's the only problem. We don't always have the radius. When you think about a car that has skid marks that curve, it doesn't make a perfect circle. So if you look down here below, I have a circle. And you can see that the radius is always measured from the center of the circle out to the end. But sometimes all you have is this upper portion here connected with this dashed line, as in this example here with these scuff marks. 
So we can calculate the radius though if we have this chord and we can then measure this distance here which is called the middle ordinate. So here is an equation that we have that we can use to find the radius because again we won't, the car won't necessarily make a perfect semicircle in the skid. So what it means is that we take the chord length so we measure from one side right here to the other we find that distance and that becomes our chord length. We square that and divide it by eight times the middle ordinate. So we would then measure from the chord to the top of the skid mark up here. And that would be our middle ordinate. And then we would add to that the middle ordinate divided by eight. And that will give us our radius to use in our equation. Let's go ahead and look at an example using our skid marks. In this first example, a car is traveling on an asphalt road with a drag factor of 0.78 and the speed limit on the road is 35 miles per hour. The driver just had his car in the shop and his mechanic informed him that the brakes were operating at 100% efficiency. The driver must make an emergency stop when he sees an obstruction in the road ahead. His car leaves four distinct skid marks, each 80 feet in length. Since the skid marks are all even in length, we'll go ahead and use the 80. We don't need to take an average. We want to answer this question. What is the minimum speed the car was traveling when it entered the skid? And was the driver exceeding the speed limit? Okay, well, we don't have yaw marks, we have skid marks. So we can use our formula for straight skid marks. And to find the speed, we take the square root of 30 times the length of the skid marks, which was 80, times the drag factor, which they give us as 0.78, and then times the braking efficiency as a decimal. So if it's operating at 100%, the decimal is just 1. All right, so very easy. We just need to simplify this. So I'm going to multiply everything underneath the radical, and I would get 1872. Then when I take the square root of that, I end up with 43.27 miles per hour. Okay, so that's the minimum speed that the car was going. It was going at least 43.27 miles per hour. And yes, the driver was definitely exceeding the speed limit, which was only 35. Let's try another example. So this one's a little bit different in that we are given how fast she was going. So we know that Melissa was traveling at 50 miles per hour on a concrete road. There's a drag factor of 1.2. Her brakes were working with 90% efficiency. And we want to determine how long the skid marks would be if she applied her brakes to come to an immediate stop. So how long would the skid marks be? Well, again, we can use the same equation. And if we use the same equation, we know that we have S here, which is our speed, which we know to be 50. And then we can just start plugging things into our equation that we already know. So we have 30. We don't know the skid distance. That's what we're trying to find. We do know, though, that the um, drag factor is 1.2. It tells us in the equation. And then the brakes were operating at 90% efficiency. So we would write that as 0.9. Okay, we want to simplify this a little bit. So if we simplify it, we have 50 is equal to, and I'm going to multiply 30 times 1.2 times 0.9. If I multiply all these together, 30 times 1.2 times 0.9, I get 32.4 times D. Okay. Now, I need to solve for d, and d is under my radical. So if you remember how to get rid of a radical, if we raise the radical to the second power, that undoes the radical. Well, if we do the right side to the second power, we need to do the left side, right? Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we need to square both sides. 50 squared will give us 2,500. And then on this side, we're just left with the 32.4d for our skid distance. So in order to find D now, it's quite simple. We would just divide both sides 
by 32.4. These cancel and we can then determine that our skid distance would be somewhere around, if I rounded to the nearest foot, 77 feet. So if she were to apply her brakes, she would skid 77 feet in the forward direction. Let's now look at an example with yaw marks. In this example, we have an accident reconstructionist who took measurements from the yaw marks left at the scene. We are using a 43 foot cord length. So if we consider that we have some yaw marks, let's draw what that might look like. So perhaps it looks like this. And this distance here is our cord, and we've measured that to be 43 feet. And the middle ordinate, so from the cord to the top of the circle, was measured to be 4 feet. And then we have the drag factor, which is 0.8, and we want to determine the radius of the curved yaw mark, and then we want to use that to determine the minimum speed the car was going. All right, well, remember our equation for yaw mark. So to find our speed, it's the square root of 15, that constant, times our friction or drag, and then multiplied by the radius, which we don't have. But we can find our radius. Okay, in order to find the radius, remember that we need to take the chord squared, so we take 43 squared, divide that by 8 times the middle ordinate, which is just 4, and then we need to add to that the middle ordinate divided by 2. Okay, putting that in our calculators, if we take 43 squared, we get 1849 divided by 32, and 4 divided by 2 is just 2. Now if I do 1849 divided by 32, I get about 57, and if I add 2 to that, I end up with a radius of 59 feet that I can now use in my equation. Okay, so to find the speed, so I have now found the radius. To find the speed now, I'm going to take the square root of 15 times my drag factor of 0.8 times the radius I found of 59. If I put all that in my calculator, I end up with the square root of 708, and if I take the square root of that, I end up with 26.6 .6 miles per hour. So we can determine that the minimum speed that car was going was 26.6 .6 miles per hour. Let's look at one final example using yaw marks. In this one, we want to determine the minimum speed of the car at the point the brakes are immediately applied to avoid a collision based on yaw mark cord measuring 62.4 feet. And the middle ordinate was 5 feet. Remember, the other thing we need to know is the drag factor on the road surface, which in this case is 1.2. So, pretty slick road. We're actually having less drag in this road. So, maybe it's just an, an, ice, an icy road at this point. Okay, well, remember that we have our regular equation for yaw marks, which is to find the speed. We take the square root of 15, a constant, times our drag factor, times the radius. But we don't have our radius, we only have a chord and a middle ordinate. So we need to go ahead and use our equation to find our radius. All right, we have the chord at 62.4, we want to square that. We know then that the middle ordinate is 5, so we take 8 times the middle ordinate, and then we add to that the middle ordinate divided by 2. Just like we did last time, we'll go ahead and simplify. We'll take 62.4 and square it and get 3893.76 and 8 times 5 is 40 and then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Two okay, 3893.76 divided by 40 is going to give us 97.4 Three, four, and if we add two and a half to that, we end up with 99.84 feet, and that would be our radius. 
Again, let's go ahead and stick that in our equation. So we have 15 times a drag factor of 1.2 times a radius of 99.84. If we multiply everything underneath the radical, we end up with 1797.19, and if we take the square root of that, we get 42.4 miles per hour. Pretty cool information. So next time you're on the scene of an accident, maybe you can look at the skid of the yaw marks and you can kind of take a rough estimate in your head about how fast the cars were going. This concludes our lesson on measuring skid and yaw marks to determine speed. So at this point, to summarize, you should have this formula in your notes and an explanation of what the D, F, and N mean. Also, be able to work backwards to find the skid distance if you know the speed by taking and squaring both sides. Finally, make sure you have this equation written down in your notes for yaw marks. In addition to that, you need to have this equation written down in order to determine the radius so that you can plug it into the equation to determine speed if you have yaw marks.